All right, folks, uh, today um, I'm introducing a new series based around a few apps uh, to improve distance learning for faculty and students. Um, in this initial series that we're working on, we're going to preview Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, and Padlet. Um, these are proven apps um, that teachers have used extensively, um, and their main features are that they're collaborative and interactive. And so that's a great, uh, great tool to have with our distance learning. Today we're going to look at Edpuzzle specifically, um, and the school has already purchased pro licenses for every faculty member in the upper school. So um, you'll get a link from me. Um, you should be able to uh, click on that link and it'll automatically activate your account tied to your Westminster.net um, Gmail account. So we're going to talk about kind of logging in later and also just, you know, um, what the basic features are. Uh, what is Edpuzzle? Well, um, Edpuzzle is a free uh, assessment center tool that allows teachers and students to create uh, interactive online videos by embedding a couple things, uh, multiple choice questions, um, audio notes, audio tracks, and you can comment on videos and things like that. So it makes it, um, you know, I think really the challenge that Edpuzzle is trying to solve is um, how difficult it is oftentimes for educators to hold students accountable when they just watch video. And so what a great tool. Uh, most teachers already know how, what a powerful tool video is. Some of you probably watch feature length films in your class. Um, some of you watch YouTube clips all the time. Um, but, you know, a lot of our students are visual learners and a lot of them, you know, some studies even show that 95% of kids, um, students today are watching YouTube clips. So um, if we can tap into that, great. Um, this is something that they can also do offline, necessarily not with Zoom all the time. So that's another uh, thing we're trying to look at. Okay, so how does it work? Well, the process is uh, really simple. Um, you're just going to find a video um, online. You're going to ask a question and assign it to class. So that's what we're working on today. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and hopefully it'll be easy. If you have any questions, please reach out to Mitchell, myself, or Steven, and we are happy to support you. So um, let's jump into it, and uh, hopefully you'll find that this is a tool worth using. All right, folks, today I'm going to show you the basics behind Edpuzzle real briefly just to kind of give you a flavor of what it is. Um, this is the Edpuzzle dashboard. So once you've logged in, uh, got your code um, that I sent you via email, you're all set. And then you end up at a spot like this. You know, you should know if you click on my, your little head over there, I got the pro school account. I'm tied into Westminster's. And so that's great. Um, one thing you're immediately going to want to set up is um, my classes. And so you're going to want to add a new class. Okay. So if I was to, you know, um, to do that, it's kind of tied in heavily to Google Classrooms. You don't need to worry about that. I can click a new class and I could enter whatever I want. So um, let's just say that I was still teaching intro to history. Whoops, history. Um, I could add a description if I wanted that's optional. I don't mess with these settings. And I just said create a class. Okay. Um, now you'll see here that I don't have any assignments or anything like that, but I can invite students. And so what's great about this is you just send them a link as well. Usually I post this on Schoology, uh, they get the link and they just automatically sign up. And so it makes it really easy. Okay. So students are now, will begin to populate your class. And I usually set aside time in class to make that happen or just sign up for homework. All right, um, so popping back out to the content section. Um, again, you'll notice in the popular channel section down here, there's lots of resources you can use in um, Edpuzzle. So whether Edpuzzle, this is kind of like their uh, people who have made videos that you can use, can reuse and share there. So you can share kind of content even across, um, you know, with even within your PLCs or in your department, um, that might work. YouTube is obviously the largest repository. You can have anything in there, um, Khan Academy, Great for certain things, math maybe particularly. They have one, especially for math down here, they got crash course, it's a his, more of a history site. Um, so lots of options, and I definitely recommend that you take a look at all those. Um, I'm gonna go to YouTube, so for, just for example today, um, I'm gonna go here, and you can really search a lot of different ways in any of the search bars, but um, I typically go to the content, and then I'm gonna go to my content, okay? And I'm going to add content. Okay, so if I add, if I hit the button add content, I'm going to create a video. I could upload a video if I've created my own. Uh, that would, uh, you know, that would definitely work. We definitely have teachers who do that. So I don't see any of these videos that I want, but I already know what I want because I've been on YouTube. And all I have to do is we're actually working on some bike machines and engineering. And so I thought this was an interesting clip. So I'm just going to, you know, highlight this, copy it, come back over to Edpuzzle, paste it up here. 
search for it and because it's linked to YouTube, there's the video. I already know that. I could change the name if I want. I can do a voiceover and we'll talk about the questions. The first thing they want you to do though is to kind of cut the video. Some of these, like this one has uh, a little bit of, um, you know, kind of an ending. So what I can do is I can, you know, a little bit of commercial kind of stuff and I can just kind of cut that down. So that's about right. Just keep it there. That'll be the ending of the clip. So I've shaved off just a few seconds. No big deal, but maybe it makes it a little bit more streamlined. Okay. Um, voiceover. I don't. I haven't used really this. I don't use this too much. Um, there's definitely applications for it, but typically what I use it for is for questions. And so one of the things that I can write in here are uh, multiple choice questions. It could be almost be like they're watching the video and then they take a quiz um, right then and there. So again, it's to engage the students as they're working their way through the videos. Um, an open note question you know, or, oh, sorry, open-ended question, you know, uh, you know, you could be watching a history thing and just, you know, type in, you know, whatever it is that you want in there in terms of like, you know, to engage the students again. And so, um, this one, there was a question about nonprofits versus, um, NGOs. And, uh, that's what I wrote, um, about in this one, nonprofits versus NGOs. And there was a, you know, kind of longer version of that question, but just for you guys can see that you can type in the box um, and make it happen. And so they would have to respond to this question. And so then I would just hit save. And one thing, I'm actually gonna move it. So you'll see that I actually put the question there at the end, but I can slide that question anywhere in the video where it makes sense. So typically I'll watch, the, as I'm watching the video, um, I'll, I'll listen to it and then be like, oh, this is a place for a great question and I'll add that in there. And so when the students are watching this, so they're watching the video as it's going through and then all of a sudden I get to this section, stop, and then all of a sudden my question's gonna pop up and it won't resume until they've answered the question and then they can hit continue. I think they can actually skip over it, um, but for the most part you're grading them so they know that they, it's just a marker to do that. Um, the other feature you can put in is notes if you wanted to add a note, so later on in the film. If I wanted to add a note, I could kind of put my notes in there as well, maybe for some context that the video is not getting at. So again, a great feature that you could use as well. When I've done all my, well, my cuts, my voiceover, my question, I just simply come up here, hit finish, okay? And here is the video. And then what I do is I go down to this bottom right hand and I can do a couple things. And the main one that you were focusing on is just assign. Okay, so I can assign it to whatever class I want. In this case, I'm just gonna I'll assign it to Intro to History. Um, and I, you know, I could assign it to all the students. I don't have any in there, but if I did, let's say if I did this one, um, I could show all the students and assign them all as well. Over on the other side, I could put my due dates, uh, when I want it to be due, if I want it to be due tomorrow, the time, um, all those things are um, available. So again, really easy to do. Um, I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to click off of this because I've already assigned this to my class. So if I go to my class, once it's been assigned, what you'll see up here is, hey, there's an assignment that's due. Okay, so if I click on that, this is one of the features I really love about it. You can see there's the actual um, video that they're supposed to be watching. You'll see I get a little update. Here's so many answers turned in, 7 of 14. Okay, we get some data right there. If I go to my, um, uh, sorry, students, uh, oops. Uh, let's see, in progress, if I click on it, it will tell me. So I clicked on the actual assignment and now it'll tell me where they are and maybe watching it. And so I have a couple people, and actually these people aren't in the class anymore, so that's okay, um, that haven't watched it. And then I have a few that started it but haven't finished it yet. And I got a few that kind of watched most of it but not all of it. Um, and then a few that have finished it. And it'll also show me if I click on their individual, um, it'll also show me their responses to some of the questions as well. And so it's a great feature to get to kind of hold uh, students accountable, but also it makes it more interesting, I've found, for students. So uh, it's a great tool to use. Again, that's really kind of like high level, um, just overview of how to use it. Uh, there's lots of different ways um, that, you know, in more in-depth ways that you can kind of um, activate um, using the video. But again, um, we'll talk about that at a later date. I hope you got something out of this video and I hope you try to give Edpuzzle um, a chance. All right, that's it. Have a great one, and I will see you all uh, again virtually sometime soon. That's it. Bye.